Escape Through the Forest In a hasty effort to leave the outlaw haven before attracting any more unwanted attention, Hattori Hanzo escapes unseen through the nearby forest. Not long into the journey, the forest has grown incredibly dark, and a chilling, dense fog has rolled in. Hattori's monkey begins acting distressed and frantically runs deeper into the gnarled trees. When Hattori finally catches up with his companion, he has a sudden realization. Something is terribly wrong with this forest, and he is now horribly lost. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the adventures of Hattori Hanzo. Let's take a look at how Hattori is progressing since the last episode. Not too much happened in the way of stat changes. We are at 1,010 XP, 725 in gold, and we are now carrying 8 anvils of wheat. Hey guys, just a quick message about this video. I ended up shooting it off and on over a few days, so I did forget some rules and miss some things. I will point it out in the video, but uh, my apologies for forgetting lots of stuff. I hope you still enjoy this episode. Let's rejoin Hattori and his monkey companion as they venture through the forest. Hello everyone, and welcome to the adventures of Hattori Hanzo, episode 10, season 2. Today we'll be playing the escape adventure, however instead of the mines, we will be using the forest of the dead. The mission starts with our hero already in the middle of the forest on just a cross path map tile. And all four exits of the cross path are considered doors. Mission goal, we're being chased by darkness. Hattori must find a way out of this forest of the dead before they're devoured in the mist and fog. We must explore the forest until we find the forest entrance map tile and escape. Special rules, we are surrounded by darkness. As we frantically search for a way to escape the darkness, it closes in around us. Anytime Hattori finds an exploration token with a clue icon, it moves the hero posse marker one step forward on the depth track, but also adds an extra threat card to the token. If it is already an attack or an ambush attack, this is an extra threat card for that fight. The additional enemies will ambush as well if it is already an ambush attack. If the exploration token was an encounter, this makes it an attack as well with a single threat card. We also have dangerous escape during the objective. At the end of the turn in which Hattori is standing on the forest entrance map tile as the objective room, roll a special hold back the darkness test. For this adventure we also have immediate dread. All growing dread cards are revealed immediately when drawn, rather than being placed on the stack. Lastly, we may not flee. Once we begin the adventure, Hattori may not flee. He is trapped and lost within the forest, and must see the adventure through to the end. Our objectives. We must find the forest entrance to escape. Anytime a new map tile is placed, Move the hero posse marker as normal, then roll 2d6. This roll may not be re-rolled. If the roll is equal to or higher than the current position of the hero posse marker on the depth track, Hattori has found the way out. Ignore any door or gate icons on the exploration token for the map tile just placed, as it only has one exit leading directly to the forest entrance. We wouldn't even be able to begin to roll until we're on 12 of the depth track, so we won't roll for the first few rooms. The Forest of the Dead has the world rules Shadowy Realm. Anytime a Hold Back the Darkness roll is failed, every hero takes one horror hit, or two horror hits, if you're holding the lantern. Also, heroes with Spirit 4 or higher are plus one max grit but minus two to sanity. Thankfully, Hattori only has a spirit of three. Let's hold back the darkness and find a way out of this forest. Six. 
Seven is good. Our monkey companion has initiative six, so he will be going first. Let's see if he throws some poo. He does! He loses his activation and throws some poo at Hattori. Hattori must defend against one corruption hit. Hattori has a willpower of 4+. plus. He succeeds! He's a good poop dodger. Let's roll for Hattori's movement. My plan is to move in all four directions before we even leave this cross path to try and get the marker moving. Three. We'll immediately look through, and we have found a long passage. Holding back the darkness. Eight is good. Let's see if the monkey throws some poo again. <laughs> he does! Oh my god, this monkey! Hattori must make a corruption save. Willpower is four plus. Come on and dodge that poo. He does. Rolling for Hattori's movement. Six. We will look through and find a dark hollow. Shifting the board just a bit. Some map cards in the Forest of the Dead call for a number of decayed trees to be placed on that map tile. For each decayed tree, roll a d6 and place the tree on the cross point between spaces marked with the number rolled. Models may not move diagonally through a decayed tree unless they can move through other models, and any model in a space touching one or more decayed trees gains cover 6 plus save, even against melee attacks. I'm going to show that process for this first room, and then every room afterwards I'll just be doing it off screen. So we're going to add D3 trees, two trees, and they'll be located at numbers three and four. Let's reveal our exploration token. One doorway and one encounter. Our encounter for this room is a cold fog. You pull your collar tight, shivering against the cold chill in the foggy air. The frigid mist is so thick here. It is hard to see more than a few feet in front of you as you pick your way through the uneven ground. Who knows what new horrors might be lurking in the shadows ahead. Fog covers this map tile as well as every map tile adjacent to it. Enemies in the fog are plus one combat. Heroes in the fog are minus one to movement and may not re-roll defense rolls. Ranged attacks may not draw a line of sight through more than three spaces affected by fog. When this card is first drawn, roll a d6. On the roll of one or two, attack! Draw threat card. Alright, come on three or higher. We are good. This card remains in play. Before we attempt to hold back the darkness, I just remembered we need to roll three corruption hit rolls for the three items we purchased in the Outlaw Haven Samurai Lords location. We have a willpower of four plus. And we have defended all three corruption points. Fantastic. Holding back the darkness. Six will fail. We will be taking two horror hits. Again, willpower is four plus. We fail both, taking two points of sanity damage. Let's see if the monkey actually gets to move around this time. No! Throws poop again! Listen, monkey. Can Hattori dodge the corruption hit? Four plus. No! We take a point of corruption. 
Thanks a lot. Rolling for Hattori's movement. We are starting on that map tile, and we are adjacent, so we're minus one to this roll from Cold Fog. Five. So we'll be moving four spaces. We will look through, and we've come across runic stones. We do have an advanced encounter for this room. Let's reveal our exploration token. Three doorways, an encounter, and a clue icon, which adds a threat to this room. Before we see what's in the room about to attack us, let's resolve our encounter cards. The advanced encounter is dancing lights. Green glowing lights flicker and dance across the gnarled trees and hanging vines here. As you get closer, you see a large runic symbol cracked into the stony floor of an ancient ruin. A brilliant emerald light burning inside. The dancing lights are mesmerizing, and you feel yourself getting lost in their hypnotic embrace. Make a spirit 5 plus test. Our spirit is 3. We are successful. If successful, you are energized by the burning green lights. Discard any status effect markers you have, and you may recover a grit. Well, we don't have any status effects, but we will take a grit. Our next encounter, Unwanted Child. Well, that seems sad. The silence of the forest is broken by a soft whimper and sobbing in the dark. The mist clears, revealing the form of a young child huddled up on the ground and crying into its folded arms. As you approach, the sobbing stops, but it remains motionless. We can choose to slowly reach out, making a spirit 6 plus test, or slowly back away, making an agility 5 plus test. Well, the risk reward, to me, seems much better on the spirit test, even though we have one less die, but we do have two grit. So we're going to slowly reach out. We have a spirit of three, we need a six plus. We will spend a grit. We are successful this time. If successful, the ghostly child is comforted by your touch leaving you a gift as it vanishes. Draw two loot cards. We've been given... Ooh, this should come in handy. Draw a gear card or an artifact card if in another world. We are in another world. The artifact that we have found is... The Book of Names. Once per fight, choose an enemy model to look up its true name in the book. Until the end of that fight, it is minus one on its to hit rolls against you. Plus six may still trigger special effects. And you are plus one damage on all of your attacks against it. Or plus two if it is a demon. Requires lore four or higher to use. And of course our lore is only two. We are going to hand that to the monkey to hold on to since we don't want to add to our weight with something we can't use even though he keeps throwing his feces at us. And the second loot card... Coin Cash! $50. Let's see what will be attacking us. We have drawn... Harvesters. Traveling from world to world, these alien collectors from another dimension wear massive suits for protection against all manner of hostile environments. We will be facing one Harvester. Harvesters are alien and suit. They are a large size at initiative 4. They are tough, immune to critical hits. They wear a heavy environment suit, immune to damage from explosives and environmental or weather sources. They have grapple. Whenever a harvester rolls doubles for their melee to hit roll, it also does one free attack listed below for the double rolled. They have a 7 for movement, escape on a 3 plus, their melee to hit is 3 plus, they roll 2 combat that do 4 damage each, 
They have a 5 for defense and 4 health. Their elite abilities will be 2 dimensional recall. When killed, a portal opens and pulls the harvester back through, spilling out void energy. Every hero on the map tile takes D3 corruption hits. And 6 void gauntlets. Plus one combat. If any of the hits roll doubles, it triggers grapple. Or triggers it twice if triples are rolled. Let's hold back the darkness and begin our fight with this harvester. Three will fail, getting us a darkness card. The darkness card we pulled is... Grip of Death. An icy grip of a ghastly specter seizes you, threatening to squeeze the life out of your heart. Every hero must make a spirit 6 plus test. Hattori has 3 for spirit. And we have failed. Should we use a grit? Yes, let's try to use a grit. Again, we need a 6 plus. And we are successful. If successful, gain 15 XP. Let's see if our monkey will go, or if this forest is still scaring the poop out of him. <laughs> Alright, he's finally gonna go. I don't think I want him to engage the harvester. I'm quite sure the harvester would absolutely destroy him. Maybe we'll just move him up next to Hattori. Before the harvester goes, we are going to actually use one of our flash that we're carrying with our traveler's pack. We discard to drop all enemies minus two to their initiative for the turn, which will drop them to initiative two, which will allow Hattori to now go. We're also going to use a Hellfire Sake, discard to gain D6 Fury tokens. We're gaining 4 Fury. Pretty good way to start. Rolling Hattori's movement. 1, at least we gain back a grit. I think we're going to choose not to move. We're going to stay right there. We'll see who the Harvester will attack. 1, 2, 3, Hattori. 4, 5, 6, the monkey. Hattori it is. He will roll his 2 combat, and he hits on a 3 plus. 2 hits. Let's see if Hattori can defend. He defends on a 3 plus. He defends 1, and he takes 1. Let's see if our armor will help us. We do armor of 5 plus. We defend 1. Rolling wall of steel. We take 3 wounds. I feel like we may have wasted the flash of that round, but we didn't roll enough to get in there and do anything. Holding back the darkness. Nine is good. I think we'll discard our other flash so that the harvester has to go last again. Will the monkey attack? He will. The monkey will roll his two combat, hitting on three plus. One hit. The Harvester has a defense of 5, so we need a 6 for anything to go through. No wounds. Our monkey will scream at the Harvester, making him minus 1 on all of us to hit rolls during his next activation. Hattori will go. Let's see if we gain a grit. We do 
not. Rolling his four combat. We hit on a three plus. The harvester is immune to criticals, but we do get two hits. Each of these hits will be minus five to the roll. One wound. We will spend four fury, causing two automatic hits that are plus one damage each, so these rolls will be minus four to the roll. Two more wounds. Harvester will go, rolling his two combat. Hitting on a four plus now because of the monkey's scream. No hits. Excellent. Holding back the darkness. Nine is good. Well, we have no more flash, so the harvester will not be going last. Our monkey will go. Hopefully. Let's see if this harvester is scaring the poop out of him. Oh, gotta be kidding me. He loses his activation, throws some poop at Hattori again. Let's see if Hattori can dodge the flinging poo. He does. Harvester will roll his two combat against us, hitting on three plus. Two hits. Oh, doubles! Good god. So he has scored two hits, and he also does smash, which ignores our defense. But it does not ignore our armor. Let's see if our armor can defend against eight wounds. Defending on a five plus, we blocked two. Let's use Wall of Steel. Again, defending on five plus. Blocked two more of those, so we take four wounds. The Tori will now go, rolling his four combat. The Tori hits on a three plus. Two hits. Rolls will be minus five to the roll. One wound, he is dead. That was not so bad. Let's roll to catch our breath. We can heal three wounds. Let's see what our loot gets us. D3 Darkstone. And we'll be gaining... Three Darkstone that will go right into our Tansu chest. Holding back the darkness. Ugh. Double twos in the Forest of the Dead will trigger Dark Dread. Things are looking more and more bleak by the moment. Draw a Growing Dread card. We have pulled Jealous Spirits. Swirling around you, ghostly apparitions begin to materialize. At first they are beautiful, but as the air grows ice cold, they twist and contort into a terrifying specter, driven mad by their lust for life. Every hero must make a lore 6 plus test. Hattori has a lore of 2. We are successful! If we had failed, we would have lost our burrowing Snarku. That would not have been good. Hopefully he'll come in handy at some point during this adventure. Alright, monkey, what are you gonna do? Oh my god. This monkey. Let's see if Hattori can dodge yet again. His willpower is 4 plus. He manages to dodge the poo. 
rolling for Hattori's movement. Five. I think we'll go forward through this room since the fog is still affecting the room we're standing in. Or half standing in, I should say. We will look through and see what we find. A torchlit path. Shifting the board just a bit. We do have an advanced encounter for this room. This will also be our first attempt at finding the exit when we roll a hold back the darkness roll next time. Let's reveal our exploration token. Two doorways, two encounters. Our advanced encounter for this room is Shadowy Hole. A dark hole catches your eye, burrowed into the side of a mossy embankment. As you step closer to get a glimpse inside, something shiny glints in the firelight. You could probably reach that without going too far inside, right? Make a luck 6 plus test. Tatori has a luck of three, and we are not successful. If failed, the glint was off the eye of a massive skull spider hiding in the shadows. Lunging out of its hole, it sinks its teeth into your arm, covering you with sticky webbing before retreating back into the dark. Take d8 wounds, ignoring defense and gain d6 webbed markers. Good lord. And that was just our advanced encounter. We still have two more to go. Alright, d8 wounds, ignoring defense. Two, that's not bad. Let's see if our armor will defend us there. Armor 5 plus. No good, wall of steel. Defend them both. Excellent. Now let's see how much webbing we'll be getting. Two web markers. For those of you unfamiliar with being webbed, for each web marker a model has, they are minus one movement to a minimum of zero. And they take plus one damage for every enemy hit that they take. At the start of the model's activation, it may make a strength 5 plus test. For each 5 plus rolled, they may remove one web marker. Well, between the poop and the sticky webs, this is not a good night for Hattori so far. Our second encounter is... Countless Skulls. The soft, dark soil beneath your feet rises up into embankments on either side of the path here filled with the countless bones and skulls of ages beyond reckoning. Worms wriggle and sprouts of fungus spring out from sullen bony eye sockets, reaching upward toward the faint and dying light overhead. This place is more than just a home for the dead. It is built upon the dead. Make a spirit 5 plus test. Hattori's spirit is 3. And we have failed. If failed, the cold dread of death surrounds you, chilling you to the core. Take d6 wounds or sanity damage, any mix. Ignoring defense, willpower, armor, and spirit armor. Woo! Alright, let's hope for a low roll. We will be taking... Five. How should we divvy this up? Well, let's just go ahead and put it all into sanity. I won't feel like we're wasting <laughs> armor rolls that way because we don't have spirit armor. Our final encounter, the Drifter's Way. A ghostly figure walks amongst the trees ahead, shimmering faintly with the glow of the dead. As you get closer, he looks up at you with sunken eyes. At long last, I am able to die. But this place has trapped me. Help me. Help me to escape and finally be free. 
make a lore 5 plus test. We have a 2 for lore. We are successful. If successful, gain 25 XP as you realize that even if you were to find and recover his bones, he would never be free of his drifter's curse. Either way, draw a growing dread card as the ghostly figure returns to his eternal wandering. Well, how is that a success? This place is terrible. The growing dread card we've pulled is Archaic Madness. The horrors of this place assault your mind with the weight of countless ages gone by and the dark depravity of mysteries beyond time. The hero party as a whole immediately takes a number of sanity damage equal to the current position of the darkness on the depth track, ignoring willpower. If only one or two heroes take half this amount instead, rounding up. Well, we will gain one point of sanity damage. I can live with that. Alright. Let's make our Hold Back the Darkness roll. If we roll a 12, which is highly unlikely, we have found the exit from the forest. So close! 11. At least it's good. At least it's a good roll. Alright, monkey. I understand that you're scared. I understand crazy stuff is happening in these woods. You need to stop throwing your poop at me. Actually, I don't even think I'm in line of sight of this guy anymore. No, I'm around the corner. So, let's see if he activates or just stands there. He goes. Alright. He does have a 10 for movement. Put him there, since we're not really sure where we're going yet. Rolling for Hattori's movement. Five. We'll look through the doorway, and we have found a mid-passage. Shifting the board just a bit. I do have to apologize, I got that Hold Back the Darkness roll confused with rolling to see if you found the exit. Whenever we lay a new map tile, we have to roll 2d6 to see if we have found the exit. It has nothing to do with the Hold Back the Darkness roll but where we are on the depth track. So this time we need to roll an 11 or 12, and if we do, we have found the exit of the forest. And we have! Oh my god, I can't believe it. This may be a quick video. Okay, let's hold back the darkness and see if we can get out of here. We have failed. Let's see what our monkey decides to do. Look here, monkey. Not only are we coming off of a lighted pathway, but we can see the exit. Stop throwing your poo. <laughs> Alright. Monkey is going to beat feet to get out of here. Let's actually back him up a little bit just in case we don't make a clean escape. Rolling for Hattori's movement. Five. Now we make that special Hold Back the Darkness roll. If we make this roll, we are good to go and we can flee the forest. If we fail, we must face an epic threat blocking our way. We need a seven or higher. Seven! We are good! That was a lot less thrilling than I was expecting it to be, I apologize. But I'm glad that we made it through, and that means our monkey has survived a mission and gains a skill point. He only needs two skill points to allow him to stop throwing poop at me and become a regular curious monkey. Once the heroes have escaped, either by defeating the enemies, 
or by passing the dangerous escape rule, the mission is successfully completed. Each hero receives 100 XP. Hattori and his monkey will now head off in search of the next feudal village and leave this forsaken forest far behind us, hopefully. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in our next episode.